Beating the market is the goal of any serious investor, and there's an incredibly easy way to do so, regardless of your investing experience. And the answer is not to turn to a professional. In fact, the majority of professionally managed portfolios charge you high fees while also falling short of the market's return. But oh, do I have some great news for you. There's a passively managed portfolio that has outperformed the market for each of the last 10 years that you can get set up in a breeze. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can destroy the S&P 500's returns while on autopilot and spend your time doing whatever it is that you love to do. But first, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Jeff Teeples, and here we aim to grow your wealth with simple, time-tested solutions. And a quick note before we get into this, I am very passionate about this portfolio as it's exactly how I have grown my wealth over the years. But with that said, this isn't financial advice. Please always do your own research before making an investment of any kind. The portfolio consists of three funds, each of which have a unique role. And when you add them all together, they will outperform the S&P 500 on good and bad years. Okay, the modern three fund portfolio consists of a broad market ETF, and this is what I like to refer to as the cornerstone, a growth ETF, this is the roller coaster, and there's a dividend ETF, the stabilizer. Let's take a closer look at each of these three holdings. Holding one is VU, and this is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. It's ticker VOO. It has 508 holdings. Now this is 500 of the largest companies in the United States. And the reason there's 508 holdings is some of the companies have multiple share classes, but it is 500 companies. The expense ratio is razor thin at 0.03%. And you might hear this referred to as three basis points. So every 100 basis points is 1%. And what this means is that for every $10,000 you have invested in VU, you'll pay $3 per year. And the dividend yield usually hovers around 1.5%. Now we'll jump over to Seeking Alpha to take a further look at VU and also look at an additional option for your cornerstone holding. I've pulled up VU, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF on Seeking Alpha to do some additional research here. We're gonna start on the holdings tab. So as you can see, VU is fairly heavy in technology, like most ETFs. That's where a lot of the value in the market is at 29%. And then it goes healthcare, financials, consumer cyclical, communication, and industrials, anywhere from 13 to 8% each. And then we jump over a little less weight in consumer defensive, energy, utilities, real estate, and basic material. So it's fairly well diversified. It's a bit tech heavy, but that's just the nature of the beast because that's where a lot of the value is in the overall US stock market. In the top 10 holdings in VU are Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Nvidia, Alphabet here is Google, Tesla, Meta Platforms, formerly known as Facebook, Berkshire, and United Health Group. And the top 10 holdings are only 30% of VU, which is pretty low. This just shows that it's a well-diversified ETF. Okay, we're gonna scroll back up here and let's just check out the dividends tab as well while we're out here. So on the dividend summary, VU has about a 1.5% dividend. You get $6.20 for every share you hold in the trailing 12 months. The five-year growth rate of the dividend is 6.16%, which has outpaced inflation, which is 3.7 or so percent in that time frame. And we're gonna look at the last 10 years of dividend growth. And as you can see, it grows its dividends on a yearly basis. It did have a slight drop here from 20, 2019 to 2020, as you can see here. But other than that, it's stepped its way up gradually over time. The last aspect I like to take a look at is charting. And that's just to see the returns of VU. And what I like to do is select metrics and add total return as well. So we have price return and total return, which includes dividends reinvested. So in the last year, VU is up about 18.5%. In the last three years, it's up 47%. Over five years, you can see it's up 75% on total returns. And over the last 10 years, it's up 222%. That is quite the return. Now I'm gonna narrow this down to only show total return. I'm going to add an alternative for your cornerstone holding and that's going to be VTI. So VTI is the total 
stock market index. And as you can see, over the last 10 years, VTI has gone up 206% with dividends reinvested compared to the 222 of VU. The last five years, it's up 69%, nice. In the last three years, it's up almost as much as VU. The difference between these is VU is made up of 500 of the largest companies in the United States. They're all large cap, whereas VTI has all of the US stocks. So it's just under 4,000 total holdings in VTI compared to 508 in VU. So with VTI, you get some of the newer, fast rising companies, but you also get all the junk in there. You get a little bit of everything. I think VU is ironically a little better diversified, if not more diversified, and it gives you quality companies with longstanding results. All right, it's time to dive into holding number two, and this is that roller coaster growth ETF, VGT. So VGT is the Vanguard Information Technology ETF, ticker symbol VGT. There are 325 holdings in VGT, and the expense ratio is 0.10% or 10 basis points. And this means that for every $100,000 you have in VGT, you'll pay a $10 fee per year. And the dividend yield usually hovers around 0.7%. Let's jump over to Seeking Alpha to take a look at some additional information about VGT and an alternative option for your growth ETF, if that's the direction you choose to take. Okay, so here's VGT pulled up on Seeking Alpha, and we're going to start with the holdings tab. So VGT is 99.4% technology, 325 holdings, and nearly all of them are related to technology. As you can see, Apple and Microsoft make up over 40% of VGT. And then you have other tech-related stocks such as NVIDIA, Broadcom, Adobe, Cisco, Salesforce, and so on and so forth. And the top 10 holdings make up 61% of the entire ETF. It's very top-heavy. And so let's scroll back up and let's just check out the dividends tab. And you're probably thinking, what do you mean the dividends tab? We're on a growth ETF. But it does pay almost a 0.7% dividend. And one thing that's impressive about VGT is its five-year dividend growth rate is actually 12%. So it's really growing its dividend payments a lot faster than inflation. Although it's a low yield and the annual payout is only $3 per share, with each share costing 448 bucks, it still has been growing that dividend at a nice clip. And we're going to check out the dividend growth 10 year here. And you can see back in 2013, you were looking at 94 cents and it's really stepped its game up to $2.91 in 2022. The dividend growth is real, even though that's not the purpose of this holding. And now here's where VGT will impress, and that's on its charting. I like to add in total returns to this chart. So we have our price return only, and then total returns assumes reinvested dividends. So it's one year return is at 31%. Its year to date is actually 42%, that's wild. If you look over the last three years, VGT has returned 61%. In five years, it's at 144%. And at 10 years, it's a mind boggling 542%. And now an alternative for VGT is QQQM. You've probably heard of Invesco QQQ. So we're actually going to pull up QQQ instead of QQQM. So QQQ has more of a history, and that's Invesco QQQ. You've probably heard it's a NASDAQ 100 tracker, so it's sort of like buying the S&P 500, but it's the NASDAQ version of that, the, the 100 biggest NASDAQ companies. But the reason I'm pulling up QQQ is that it has more of a history. Its expense ratio is 0.2% or 20 basis points and QQQM is the exact same holdings. It's identical with the one change being an expense ratio at a more competitive 0.15 or 15 basis points. If you're going to buy one, buy QQQM. However, just for these analytics, I'm gonna use QQQ because it has more history when we look at these return charts. So the holdings of the NASDAQ 100 are still very tech heavy at about 50%. But you also get some communication, consumer cyclical, healthcare, and consumer defensive here at 14 through 6%. 
and then a little bit of industrials, utilities, and just a touch of financials, energy, and real estate. So compared to VGT, these 102 holdings are a lot less tech dependent, but still tech heavy, of course. VGT has more holdings at 325, but they're entirely technology. If that's a little too tech heavy for your blood, QQQM is a great alternative for your growth ETF. You can see it still has a lot of Apple and Microsoft as they're huge mega corporations, but it's only 11 and 10% as opposed to the over 40% combined. Now, if we go to the charting of QQQ, let's change the metric to the total return here and let's add a comp of VGT. So as you can see in one year, VGT's total return is 31% compared to 29. Its three year return is 61% for VGT and 48% for QQQ. Over the last five years, we're at 144 for VGT, 117 for QQQ. And over the last 10 years, you would have 542% on VGT and 435 on QQQ. So the NASDAQ 100 index is strong, but it's fallen well short of VGT. I just wanted to throw out an alternative option just in case VGT was too tech heavy for your blood. Holding number three is SCHD. This is the Schwab US Dividend ETF, ticker symbol SCHD. There are 104 holdings. It has an expense ratio of 0.06%. So that's $6 per year for every $10,000 that you have invested. And the dividend yield usually hovers around 3.5%. Now let's jump back over to Seeking Alpha to take a look at some additional details regarding SCHD. All right, we've pulled up SCHD and Seeking Alpha and let's go right to the holdings tab here. And for a sector breakdown, SCHD has very nice balance. As you can see, industrials, financials, healthcare, consumer defensive and technology are anywhere from 18 to 12% of a weighting. And then you also have a nice slice of consumer cyclical energy at 9%, and then a little less of communication, basic material and utilities down there at four, two, and basically nothing. The top 10 holdings of SCHD are about 4% each, and it's a total of 40%. So not overly weighted on the top 10 holdings and a lot more balanced than the other funds we looked at. And there's a total of 104 holdings. So it has nice diversity with all quality dividend stocks that have paid a dividend for at least 10 years. Now, if we look at the dividends tab, this is of course where SCHD shines. When we go down to the scorecard right now, we're at a 3.45% dividend yield. For every share you hold in the trailing 12 months, you've been paid $2.60. And its five-year dividend growth rate is a staggering 14%. And then its dividend growth history is 11 years in a row. And let's bounce over to the dividend growth just to see this in chart form. From 2013 to 2022, we've gone from 90 cents a share to 256 a share. And last but not least, let's look at the charting of SCHD. And of course we have our price return here. And as I normally like to do, let's also add total return because this will make a bigger difference with SCHD than it did with the other ones because of its high dividend yield. So in the last year, our total return is 8%. And the last three years, the total return is 54% compared to 38 on price. In the last five years, we're at 73. And in the last 10 years, SCHD is up nearly 200% with a price of 118% and the rest being dividends reinvested. Now it's time for my favorite part of the video, the nerdy analytics. Let's take a look at the total return comparison between this modern three fund portfolio and the S&P 500 over the last 10 years. I've popped over to Portfolio Visualizer to do a back test to compare the modern three fund portfolio to the market. So we're gonna pull the last 10 years here, 2014 through 2023 year to date included. Our initial investment amount was 10,000. We're going to contribute 1,000 a month. We're going to have it rebalanced annually. Reinvest dividends is on, you always want that. Let's display income actually as a yes. And as you can see, I've put in the modern three fund and the market, which is VU. And now by default, I put in a third of each here. If you're younger, you could put in 50% VGT, 
If you're retired and living on dividends, you could have 75% SHD. This can be any mix. I'm 41 years old and this is the mix I've been leaning towards. I'm technically a little higher in VGT, but just for simplicity's sake, let's put in a third each. And then of course, portfolio two, which is the market is entirely in VU, the S&P 500. So we're going to hit analyze here. And here's portfolio one, the modern three fund, here's VU. So let's see what our performance summary shows. We started with 10K. On the modern three fund, we ended up with $275,000 versus 235 of rolling with the market. Best year was 35% and our worst year was negative 17%, which is better than the negative 18%. So we're looking good there. The portfolio growth, you can see we slowly pulled away. The market trends are going to be similar. That's just always how it works. And by the end, we get a nice little lead there of 275 versus 235. Let's check out an annual return. So if you'll notice our blue bar here on the modern three fund portfolio is higher every single year. So there's never been a year in the last 10 years where it has not beaten the market. You can see on our one year, we're 21% up versus 19. Over the last three years, the annualized return is up about 2% over the market. Over the last five years, it's about 3%. And over the full 10 years, we're up about 2.5% over the market. And another wonderful thing with having SCHD mixed in, which somewhat replaces the traditional bond portion of a portfolio, is within that total return, which all this is being reinvested, but if you wanted to take it out, you get better cash flow with the modern three fund portfolio versus the market. As you can see, as the years go by, you're getting more and more yearly cash flow from the modern three fund portfolio. As you can see, the three fund portfolio has performed favorably to the market over the last 10 years. And there are different options for each section. The cornerstone, the growth, and the dividend ETF section. If you have your own funds that you wanna throw in instead, of course, that's perfectly fine. I would just recommend having a fund that's passively managed to take the emotions out of it. That will help you over the long haul. And also make sure that it has a low expense ratio. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a huge favor and hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and let a friend know about the channel. It really helps get it out there and I really do appreciate you. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you here next week. Peace.